We'd like to welcome everyone to Production in the Cloud. I'm Rick Demetrician, one of the program managers for Wilbros. Uh, so I wanted to be able to provide some value add uh, for you to take away from this presentation since it was only uh, about 20 minutes long. So we'll look at a basic definition for what the cloud is. We'll try and look at a simplistic uh, look at security in regards to is the cloud solution for you and uh, is it secure enough? And then we have a, a case study project uh, that we successfully executed uh, very recently and there were 10 potential steps uh, that were very crucial into that uh, project execution, uh, which was a cloud-based solution. So when we're talking cloud solution, we're really talking about a cloud computing type of application. And uh, as Harry had mentioned before, um, it's really computing uh, that provides capacity in elastic ways so it can expand to meet user needs and can contract when demand decreases. So if you're looking at an appropriate definition for a cloud solution, it's really an infrastructure of on-demand capabilities using virtualized resources that can be efficiently allocated when requested and quickly provisioned in a highly automated fashion. Uh, the cloud is kind of interesting because they uh, have always have a number of uh, studies and polls and uh, what I always find interesting is that it's such a high percentage of people that claim that they never use the cloud. They have nothing really to do inside the cloud when in reality uh, they do so daily in their personal lives, whether they're doing online banking, whether they're doing you know, social media, shopping, music, things of that nature. So as the cloud can be everything to everyone, uh, there's going to be logical questions that arise from that. You know, is the cloud appropriate for my industry? Uh, is it safe? Is it secure for my particular application? How do I ac actually execute a cloud solution and what are the things that are important to focus on up front? So what this is, is this is a simplistic architecture for what a typical cloud solution will look like. And a lot of these terms you'll see, you know, thrown around, so I wanted to be able to um, enlighten you a little bit on what some of them mean and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So a cloud deployment can be um, either in a private or a public cloud or even a hybrid portion uh, of that. So what it basically makes up a cloud solution is you'll have a platform of a, as a service, your PaaS, which is your build. You'll have your infrastructure as a service, which is your host, that's the IaaS. And then those two components together build up your software as a service, which is your consume, and that's the SaaS. Um, what's taking place in the uh, industry today is it's actually going a step further now. So there's consultants and service companies like Wilbros that are now looking at providing something like an S squared AES. That's a Wilbros term and, and we view that as service as a service. So we're not striving to be cloud providers or to build out your platform or infrastructure environments. We're really there to work as an extension of your teams to provide consulting support and a complete cloud solution implementation. So a uh, cloud computing solution is really driven from a business model and you'll see that term thrown out for me uh, significantly through this presentation but it's an elastic model that allows you to lease or rent your platform, your your computers, your software, and your communications media. So when that's all said and done, you're going to end up with some advantages to this cloud solution and some benefits, and those include an on-demand self-service, an ambiguous network access, location-independent resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and then a measured service with pay-per-use. So you can come up with rationale as to why you would want to go to a cloud solution, but you know, really it, it comes down to a couple of points. 
Um, you're going to want to move from a one-time set it and forget it type of capital expenditure uh, into an actual OPEX, operational expenditure. So you really want to incorporate this cloud solution into your day-to-day -day business. And uh, what we mean by that is it's, is it's operations driven. It's not driven from your IT or legal decisions. It is purely a business focused uh, approach. So the way that we view um, security, and you're gonna see a lot of people presenting here uh, throughout the week, but when, it, when you boil it down, your security concerns are the same for your on-premise versus your cloud providers. They're, they're all a risk-based model that you have to approach. So when you're looking at your data, typically you're gonna have it in some order of importance. So you're gonna look at your integrity of your data. That's keeping your information unaltered unless you've authorized that change. Your availability of the data to have access to it at any time with no data loss. And then your confidentiality of that data. And depending upon your specific application, you know, the percentages of each, of each of those three areas may shift around. So it's, it's been our experience at Wilbro's that uh, cloud providers secure their infrastructure at the highest levels and everyone is using the, uh, the industry standards. So there are a few industry standard names uh, that you'll see up there and I just wanted to give you a brief understanding of, of, of what they really mean. So you'll have ISO 27001. This is essentially your, your government IT industry standards. And if you're in the oil and gas industry or any kind of a critical infrastructure, uh, organizations like FIMSA and API, they recommend that you adopt an ISO 27001 or 27002 approach to your cybersecurity. Uh, you have uh, FISMA, and what that is, is that's essentially your government classifications for encryption processes, you know, things of that nature. You have PCI or your DSS uh, industry standard, and that really came out of the financial industry. So if you're doing any kind of custody transfer or card swipe, uh, you know, those standards would apply. And then your uh, SAS 70 Type 2, that's basically your Sarbanes-Oxley. So, um, you as the hypervisor, uh, you're responsible for, you know, if you're the, the end client here, you're responsible for securing the application layer uh, inside of your cloud solution. So it's very important that you understand that you own the access to the servers and the services. So when you're doing that, you can kind of protect yourself uh, by looking at private cloud solutions encryption data types, whether that's for your data when it's at rest or um, uh, in flight. In the end, it's, it's a shared responsibility of that data all the way from where the data starts in the field, all the way through that chain, through your data providers, through your communication providers, all the way until you have access to it. It has to all mesh together in that security model. So you'll look at something like a service level agreement to tie all of that together, and that's what you'll set up with your cloud providers. So it's really a shared structure, responsibility, and consistency. And if you do it right, you can implement all of your SOCs and your ISO requirements in that, in that overall solution. So, uh, you know, just a, a very simplistic background here. You know, the sets, cloud security organizations and government, this is basically all driven from the Critical Infrastructures Act of 2002, uh, you know, unfortunate, an unfortunate byproduct of 9-11. But there's a number of organizations uh, that get involved. One of the key ones that Wilbros has worked with is InfraGuard. And we do that in our uh, oil and gas critical infrastructure type of applications. And what that is, is that's really a shared approach to security uh, versus the government just coming in and getting access to it at any time they want. So it provides a little bit of framework around a good working relationship. So, you know, of note, in 2011, the federal CIO of the United States required that a quarter or 20 billion of all federal IT spending is on cloud implementation. So, you know, this is something that is, is here. Um, is it scary? Yes. But uh, it is only going to continue to grow. So we have to find a way around it, and we have to have a process and procedure for how to deal with it. So that's what we're going to get into here. 
right now. So, you know, Wilbros has uh, a number of uh, uh, very educated security consultant experts on staff, and uh, we deal with a lot of integrity management of uh, large oil and gas companies and pipeline systems throughout North America. And um, we even take it a step further to a real-time integrity management group. So when we sit down with them and we look at, uh, you know, SCADA solutions and things of that nation, which are the, basically the polling engines of the, the data coming into these cloud solutions, uh, we wanted to be able to come up with some steps of how you can actually approach a security model. And it's going to be different for, for each of you. So uh, the seven steps that we have, we basically start with an operational critical threat asset and vulnerability evaluation. This comes out of CERT with uh, uh, SEI. And what that does is that sets your baseline functional requirements for how you would handle your security system. And this is all within that Octave um, uh, policy. So there are basically three steps that you're going to look at. You're going to have your build asset based threat profiles. You're going to identify infrastructure vulnerabilities. You're going to develop security strategies. So once you have that functional requirements set for your security model, you then have to actually implement it and execute it. And this is really where we look at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And we look at their, their risk management uh, framework. And there's four steps that kind of come up with that. And there's a little bit of interlap between the NIST RFM and the Octave. So you can just kind of follow the steps as we've, as we've presented them up here. But at this point, you're going to want to implement your security controls, assess your security controls, authorize your security system, and then monitor your security system. The whole goal here is that if you're going to end up having some kind of an attack or an issue on your cloud solution, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. Uh, at some point, it probably will happen. It's how are you actually going to deal with it, how fast are you going to deal with it, and you know, build up from there. So at this point, you, know, you have an idea of, of the cloud. You say you want to go into a cloud solution. You have an idea of the security and really the risk of what you're getting involved with. How do you actually go about implementing a cloud solution? And uh, you have to really look at where are you starting from. So if this is a greenfield type of operation that you have, you're going to have business goals that are at the top that you're going to drive down to your plant floor or drive down to your uh, sites. The one that's a little bit harder is if you have an existing operation. So if you have an existing operation, chances are you have an existing historian, existing SCADA system, things like that. Um, just because you have the data doesn't mean you understand what you have. So you have to embark upon, you know, basically looking at your existing data, understanding the quality, the access to that data, and the integrity of that data. And, you're, and then you're going to look at your future business needs of, of where you want to go with your business. And then you're basically looking at a retrofit type of application. So your cloud solution is really a tool set to allow you to meet those, those business goals. So one of the projects that Wilbro's uh, recently completed was a, uh, we implemented a virtualized SCADA host control center on an oil and gas pipeline here in North America. And um, this was a client-based solution and a cloud-based solution. So. It was an interesting client in oil and gas. A lot of things uh, change, and then a lot of things stay the same. So um, we had a client that understood uh, his initial business drivers, and they basically came around four drivers that, that they had, which was one is they wanted to have a functioning leak detection system. So this really tied into their process. They wanted inventory monitoring control. So that really tied into their business systems. They wanted to have a visual and functioning SCADA host center, so that was their operations. And then they wanted to have something that would allow them to continue to go on into the future and build a system that would get uh, an increased life cycle. So centralized and virtualized data center structure with zero loss of data because it's a critical infrastructure. That's really the goals that they had set for us. Uh, beyond that, they said just put it in. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more that goes into it uh, to make that very successful. So the next you know, 10 steps that I'm going to um, provide here were very helpful 
in us actually implementing this solution. And if you're looking at something very similar, hopefully they, they help you to kind of get your hands around it. So the first step is, and then this was in our case, which was a retrofit, is the existing data validation integrity and quality. Basically, we had to go in there, we had to validate and verify all the integrity of the existing data, understand whether it was truly valid data that was in there. So that required us to get into the actual process and get into the, the engineering layer down uh, at the site level. So we did you know, a lot of project front end engineering design or feed documents. And the only way that we could control this was to come up with a very structured and modular approach to the project because you know, we had to keep the operations up and running uh, the whole time until the very last minute when we could actually go out and commission it and put it in place. So the second step was to really look at the communications media and architecture status. Uh, we went out, verified and documented all of the communications and network ar architectures. And what this did was allowed us to understand the data all the way from the instrument through that whole chain until we got it up in the SCADA system, in a leak detection system, and on into the actual historian. The key thing is we had to understand the interdependencies. And this is, you know, when you're dealing with a retrofit project, data can be shifted around and, you know, moved all around. So you have to validate it. And uh, at this point, we could understand the shared security uh, that was really required for all of that. You've got to look at a cloud solution, uh, irregardless of the application, is basically it's, it's a database. So garbage in, garbage out. So you have to take the time up front in, in a retrofit application like this, in a critical infrastructure, to spend your time on, on data verification and, uh, and data quality. Uh, the third step in, in, in our case here was we looked at the uh, centralized SCADA host and the advanced apps. Uh, the SCADA host was the actual polling engine that would be bringing everything into this cloud-based solution. So uh, we had to evaluate and look at the advanced application interfaces, the interdependencies, and then uh, you know all of the data validated and the historical data, we had to prioritize that so that we could set some minimal performance characteristics for how this overall system would have to work. Uh, the fourth step was the uh, reconfiguration requirements. And here we looked at the business goals, the data requirements, the desired solution configuration and performance, and, um, and understand what that really meant at each step along that chain. So um, in the end, at this point, we could finalize all of the operating platforms we were dealing with, um, all of the third-party vendor software that we were dealing with, and at this point, we were able to actually uh, set up some initial uh, service level agreements with the cloud providers. So what this is, is this is a, a simplistic form of the communication architecture that we actually implemented on this, uh, on this oil and gas pipeline. And so we had all of our sites that were out in the field. Uh, we would actually communicate from there uh, cellular 3G with VSAT backup to the cellular company's data centers. Uh, from that point, all of our application servers, so all the SCADA, the leak detection, what have you, they were located inside those data centers. And then we would access those applications, like the actual SCADA platform and that, through a private MPLS cloud and then actually operate the pipeline. Um, we don't really know uh, if this has been done before, but uh, it's been working now for about six months, and the client is extremely happy with the flexibility that he has because he can literally pick up those operations and he can control that pipeline from anywhere. doesn't have to have a big IT room behind him and, and, and all of that structure that comes with it. So um, for a critical infrastructure application, it's uh, worked out very well. So, as I mentioned, uh, you know, service as a service, we came in and really had to help our client uh, from a consulting side really look at how we could structure the project and provide them a solution and then actually execute that solution. So, we came in and assisted our client in determining the overall performance of the system and because it had a leak detection on top of it, 
um, you basically had to have a certain uh, performance for the leak detection system, but the SCADA system and everything else underneath it, ha you know, it's kind of the, the weakest link syndrome. So you had to fully structure that whole solution from the site uh, on up. Uh, we helped them do all the coordination with their communication systems. The data center and the cloud provider and the data center and cloud provider were basically the same, same uh, group. So it's a shared model. Uh, in this case, we actually went out and generated uh, you know, request for information RFIs for the SCADA uh, package and for the leak detection. Uh, because this was going to be a cloud-based solution and virtualized, we weren't sure if you know, anyone was prepared to do that. So we had to actually go out and do an RFI, and then we helped the client to understand what they had received when, when they got that back. And in the end, when we got it, it was uh, all of the control equipment out at the sites. We were able to continue using that, uh, but we had some serious changes that we had to implement with regards to the communications and how we had access to that. So in this case, uh, we ended up going with a DNP3 protocol. And uh, like I said, because it was a virtualized cloud solution, it, it was forced to do that. So. Uh, DNP3 allowed us to do store and forward, so we had zero loss of data. And it also allowed us to do report by exception so we could maximize the bandwidth of what was required with that, uh, with that 3G communications. And in this case, uh, we ended up using uh, Schneider Electric's uh, SCADA pack RTUs as protocol converters and uh, data collectors at each of the sites. And we used uh, Schneider Electric's uh, uh, clear SCADA HMI package and, um, and, and, and it became very apparent because it had a very integral, very tight DNP3 protocol to it. Uh, it had an integrated historian, and they did have prior cloud and virtualization experience. So uh, in the end, uh, Wilbros also helped out the client uh, you know, with their discussions on the critical infrastructure tiered levels and a data sharing model. Um, one of the most important steps that we had, and the one that I would highly encourage you to, uh, to spend the time with, is on the pilot testing for performance validation. Uh, that's really where you're going to verify the real-world performance meets the business performance goals that you've set. So you're going to look at the communication performance, and you're going to verify continuous flow rates and uh, high uptimes. And the thing that we discovered is just because your cloud provider has said performance X is what is, is the performance for the contract. That does not mean that X is going to be the performance that you're going to have at all times. So what ended up coming out of this was our uh, oil and gas company had already had contracts set up, service level agreements with the uh, cloud provider, and they, um, they were not set to a critical infrastructure level. So when we were looking at some performance issues uh, along the way, um, you know, basically we, we uncovered that uh, we were not in structured correctly within the cloud provider's own organization as a true shared model, and all of our data was getting, you know, basically knocked down in the queue. So we helped them to uncover the problems, and again, it has to be a very shared type model. Uh, the sixth step is really to go back and, and look at the performance validation, revisit those goals. And um, the pilot test is, is, is what's going to dictate that. And you have to be flexible in, in what your goals are because you are going to uncover some physical limitations. The key thing is you want to make your decisions uh, or your compromises against your risks and, and, and your known and documented issues. Uh, the second step is to implement a structured modular uh, solution approach to, to your cloud solution. Uh, in this case, being critical infrastructure, it, uh, you know, we had to keep it up and running as, as much as we could, and you know, the pipeline had been you know, there for 50 years, so you get a lot of interdependencies, so you're going to want to look at you know, a more traditional type of, of engineering approach where you have detailed engineering design documents up front. You can do a lot of in-house testing, factory acceptance tests, things of that nature. You're going to want to create a very detailed commissioning plan so you don't disrupt your operations any more than you have to. So that deployment and commissioning and site acceptance test, you're going to know all those interdependencies uh, up front. And one of the key things when you're doing a cloud solution is all of your data must be physically verified. 
you want to physically test your data into your cloud solution. So then you can implement an MOC or management of change procedure and protect the integrity of that data. The integrity, the quality of that data is very paramount. Uh, step nine is on the training and responsibility transfer. So to ensure acceptance, what we did was we involved the clients, technicians, operators, engineers, throughout the whole engineering process. So all of the front end engineering design documents, the standards, everything that we had, they had full input into that. So they basically had a vested interest in this solution. And you want to do that and have them actually witness everything so that you can do a proper transfer of ownership, responsibility, and, and uh, liability as well. And then the, the last point here is the, the manage and maintain your cloud solution. Uh, since this is going to be a part of your day-to-day -day operations, this is not a one-time set it and forget it. So if you want to get the maximum out of your cloud solution, uh, you're going to want to manage that cloud solution to the full benefits. So a successful cloud solution allows for improvements in system performance. So at this point, you know, you've got a functioning solution that's out there. It's got all your bits and pieces. Everything is operating, uh, you know, the way that it should. But now you've got the data, and you've got good data. You understand it. The integrity is good. You, you really know what you have. So you can start looking at actually improving your overall system. And so when you are set up in this realm, you, you can look at adding a uh, management information system or a management execution system on top of, uh, uh, of what we've just talked about. And we're talking with our client on this right now, but this is really looking at real-time performance enhancement and real-time process improvement. So you're going to set you know, meaningful KPIs, and then you're going to try and adhere to those KPIs. The one key thing that you have to look at when you're looking at an MES, MIS solution, or even the vendors that are providing it, is that if you have a process, a true advanced process that you're dealing with, whether that be mining, whether that be oil and gas, or what have you, um, you really have to find someone that has the real world knowledge of that process, because they're going to need to do that to write meaningful business rules uh, for those KPIs. So the key thing there is not all data is discrete. And most of the MES, MIS vendors and solutions out there came out of the manufacturing and it's more, more of a digital type of an environment. So in terms of, of value add, I've, I've uh, hopefully provided you some steps that you can look at for your cloud solution as well as you know, some steps that you can look at to get uh, a bit of a handle on your uh, shared security model. But um, uh, in the end, in terms of a summary, you know, cloud solutions, uh, they're, they're not IT or legal driven solutions. You know, they're, they're business focused OPEX solutions and they're going to be a part of your day to day operations. Uh, cloud solutions, uh, they are inherently safe uh, when you look at that shared security responsibility. Uh, and that's everything right from the data source all the way through that communication chain through your, you know, cellular provider if you're using cellular all the way through your, your cloud provider, but you have to get that hooked up as a shared responsibility. Um, you need to understand your overall business goals up front and you have to be flexible with them once you actually look at your physical system because it, it may change uh, what you can accomplish uh, with the dollars. Uh, and then we provided 10 execution steps that hopefully assist in, the go in, in your goals in defining, understanding, realizing and attaining a uh, cloud-based solution. And if you want, uh, you can uh, pick up our presentation uh, basically on, uh, on our, one of our Google Cloud sites. So uh, you can just follow the link and, uh, and get to it. Thank you. <laughs>